What's up guys, Chris Schwartz Edmondson here from Schwartz Edmondson Web Design. In today's video, we're gonna look at how to create this bottom overlay menu here. We have three different items here and each one has a cool hover interaction and the entire box is clickable so we can send these people to links that we wanna send them to. So we're gonna take a look at how to create this in Squarespace 7.1. So I am here in my 7.1 site and we wanna create the menu in its own section below the first section. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna edit the page and add a section below and I'm just gonna go ahead and add a blank section. So we're gonna be writing the HTML for the menu in a code block. So I need to add a code block to the page and then I need to delete the default text block because we want the code block to be the only block in this section because we're going to be getting rid of all the padding on this section and I just want the code block to be full width and full height of this section. But first we'll set up the menu code and then we'll remove the padding and make the block full width and height. So let's double click on the code block and delete the default content. First thing I need to do is create a container class, uh, container element. So we're gonna give this container element a class of, uh, let me close the div first. Um, we're gonna give it a class of menu container. And now inside of our container, we're going to create each of one of our three items. So we want to create each one of these items as a link element surrounding our item because we want the whole box to be clickable, not just the heading itself. So since this first one is gonna be for our work content, I'm going to give it an href. So basically, basically it's the destination URL of slash work. And so then I would just create a page that has the URL slug of slash work. And when someone clicks on this element, it'll take them to that page. So uh, I've, I've created my outermost container for my first item. And I also have to give it a class. So let's give it a class of menu item. And then inside this element, we need to create a div with a class of menu item content. And this, this uh, element here is just gonna house all of the content within this first item. Okay, so now inside of our menu item content, we can actually add our H3 heading here. And so I'm going to just call this work. Cool, so we have our first item done here. And to create our other two items, I'm just gonna copy all of this, drop down below and then paste that in there. That's our second item. And here's our third item. I'm just gonna space these out a little bit. Visually, it's a little bit easier to differentiate them that way. All right, so we have our work item. Next, we're gonna do clients. So I'm gonna add my heading of clients. You can see it update there. And then I'm going to push people to the clients page. And then finally, we're gonna have a subscribe box. So I have subscribe as the click through URL. And then here I'm gonna say subscribe. Okay, perfect. So this is the whole HTML that we need. It's Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, even if you're not super familiar with HTML. We have our container that all of these three items are housed in. Then to make up each item, we have a link. We have a, another container that houses our heading, and that's the whole structure for our HTML. So I'm going to go ahead and click done and then click save. And now we can start styling our menu with the classes that we created. So the, the first element that we have is our menu container. And this is where we're going to add the display of grid. So let's go ahead and add that. And display grid just lets us position elements very specifically. So we've now added the display of grid. We're gonna give a grid gap of five pixels. And this is just gonna create some separation between them. And the next thing that we're gonna do is do grid template columns. And for our grid template columns, we want three columns. So we're gonna do one fraction, one fraction, and one fraction. So each of the columns is going to take up an even third of the page. So now you can see everything is next to each other, which is exactly what we want. So now we can start styling our menu items themselves. And the first thing that we wanna do is give them a little uh, bit of padding. 
So let's do a padding of 20 pixels. Um, I also want the text align to be to the center, not to the left. Um, and let's save that and let's go ahead and refresh, reload the frame, because um, our CSS doesn't seem to be updating and I'm not exactly sure why that is. Okay, let's see what's going on here. So our menu item should have a text align of center. Let's see, class menu item. Ah, okay, I didn't target the element correctly. So the class is menu item. Now we have our padding. Now we have the text centered, perfect. The next thing that we have to do is give it a background color. So for the background color, I'm just gonna go ahead and paste in this color that I have saved here. I just pulled this from the image just so that it'll be more consistent and match. So uh, that's good for now. After this, we can go ahead and start targeting the section and making these elements full screen. And then we'll come back and we'll add our hover interaction and kind of our last styling portions. So what we want to do is we want to target this section. So I'm going to target this section here, grab it by its data section ID, and we're going to target the content wrapper. So we'll go content, wrapper and we'll give it a padding of zero. Now nothing is gonna happen, but I just wanna show you the element that I'm targeting here. So within the section on the page, we have the section background and then we have the content wrapper class and this element houses all of the content on the page. And as I hover over it, you can see it has a lot of padding on the top and the bottom and also on the sides. Uh, and we don't want this element to have any padding because we want our content to be full width and height. So that's why we're targeting this element here and getting rid of the padding. But you can see we've only targeted it with two selectors here. So our styling is just getting crossed out because they have a ton of selectors over here giving it padding. So what we need to do is just add an important tag. And that'll make sure that our styling overrides Squarespace's styling. So the other thing that's happening is this section has a minimum height of 66 viewport height units so it's really tall right now and we don't want this section to have a minimum height so i'm going to go min height zero and i'll throw on an important tag just to make sure that we override that style as well cool okay so now our section is looking much more full width and full height but there's actually a couple more things that we have to do we now have this horizontal scroll bar here and the reason for that is our code block has padding on it. So our, our padding is overflowing the container. So what we need to do is we need to also target the code block in this section, and we need to give it padding of zero as well. Okay, so that got rid of the padding, but we still have this overflow now, and that's because the rows in Squarespace, so if we go to a row here, Rows get negative margins to compensate for the block's 17 pixels of padding. But in this case, because this row is full width, it's actually the negative margin is pulling the content outside of the bounds of the page. And so that's why we get this horizontal scroll bar. So what we have to do is we have to target the SQS row class. And we'll need to give it a margin of zero. And I'm going to throw an important uh, tag on that element as well, just to make sure that we are again overriding that style. So actually we're in good shape now. We're ready to tackle mobile. So on mobile, the elements are still taking up like one third of the page and they're trying to live next to each other. And that's just, we don't want that. We want them to stack on top of each other. So the way that we can do that is we can change our grid template columns on mobile instead of being one FR, one FR, one FR. We can just change it to a single 1FR and they'll span the full width of the page. So what I can do is inside this element, we're going to add a media query. So this media query is only, whoops, is only applying to this menu container here. So we'll do at media screen and max width. And let's see at, at what screen width it seems like the content needs to start breaking down. So when you have your inspect window open here, in the corner of your browser, as you change the screen size, it'll give you the dimensions of your browser, the first being the width. So at what point do we think we want this to stack? I probably wanna start stacking it at around this point here, 
So that's like 800 pixels, I would say. I probably want these to start stacking. So uh, I'm going to do a max width of 800 pixels. And I'm going to give it a grid template columns of just one FR. So now when we go down to mobile, boom, they all stack on top of each other, which is perfect. Now, if I inspect the page here, our code block is still having padding on mobile. And it's because Squarespace is using three selectors and then they're also using an important tag. So it's overriding our um, just two selectors and an important tag. So what we have to do is add another selector. And so we can just add a page selector because this menu is inside of the page. Um, and actually what we can do is we can include the site wrapper ID. So all Squarespace content on the page is inside of the site wrapper container. So I'll just give it, add an ID of site wrapper here. And now we're, we're sure to have our CSS always override Squarespace's just by adding that one selector. So you can see the padding is now gone and it looks good on desktop and mobile. Now you might be wondering how I got it to the bottom of the screen. And all I did is I basically just played with the height of the first section until I found a height that made it look like the next section was like perfectly lined up to the bottom. And what's weird is when you're in edit mode and like you line it up to the bottom, once you hit save, it like completely changes. And now you can see like it doesn't look like it's along the bottom anymore. So I found that 90 for the first section, in my case, just worked out really well. So when I save it to 90 and I go full screen, it just looks like the menu is perfectly aligned to the bottom. So that's what I'm going to go with. All right. So now we have, generally, we have this set up well. Um, now we just need to add the hover interaction. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to add an after pseudo element for a solid color that's going to animate in when we hover over this element. So the way that we can write that is inside of this, um, actually, I'm just going to drop down below and I'm going to say dot menu item after. So we're going to create an after pseudo element and we're going to, we have to give pseudo elements a content property and we're just going to leave it blank. Then we're going to give it a position of absolute. We're going to give it an inset of zero so that it spans the full width of the container. We're going to give it a background color. And for the background color, I'm just gonna paste in another color that I have here. And I'm going to give it a Z index of one. And now, so you can see like each one of these elements has this after pseudo element here. What I want to have happen is as I hover over one of the elements, we want this to transition up. So the way that we can start it out of frame is by giving it a transform translate y of uh, 100%. So you can see we've shifted our solid down to the bottom of the element to start. And so now we can say when the menu item is hovered over. So menu item hover after we then want to transform this element back to zero. So you can see when I hover over it, it's just shooting up. So let's go ahead and add a transition. Uh, 0.5 seconds, and I'll just add it to everything. So there we go. We can see it's now much more smooth, which is exactly what we want. And we're going to go ahead and give an overflow because we don't want to see it beforehand. Uh, and we're going to give it an overflow of hidden. Ah, okay. So I have to give um, our menu item a position of relative. Because it didn't, this uh, solid that we added, it, it was positioned absolutely, but it didn't know what to be positioned to absolutely relative to. So now that I've given the position of relative to the menu item, we now have the solid um, just kind of appearing over each individual element, which is what we want. 
but it's covering up our content um, because we have to give it a Z index of one. So what we have to then do is come to our menu item content. And we're going to give it a Z index higher than one. So that way our content will always be on top of it. Uh, and we also, when you Z index will only work on positioned elements. So we have to give it a position of relative as well. So now as we hover over each item, we get the cool hover effect and our, it's not covering up our content. So let's go full screen. We get our hover interaction. As we shrink the screen, we then get the stacking. So very responsive, just kind of adds a little bit of extra touch to the site. I'm thinking I probably don't want to keep this in the site-wide custom CSS. Uh, it just doesn't make a lot of sense because it's very specific to this one page. But I have written this CSS in the less format, which uh, is only able to be done in the site-wide CSS window. Like you can't do nesting like this uh, in the page header code injection. So what I need to do, um, all this is fine. I haven't nested anything here. So I don't have to worry about this. I just have to worry about this first uh, snippet of CSS here that I've written. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy all of this and I'm gonna go to a less online compiler. We'll find that. And there's this beautified tools link that I like to use. So I'll paste in my less CSS and I'll click compile less. And then it spits out what uh, the normal CSS version of that would be. So you can see why less is so handy, like this little CSS turned into all this CSS where you have to um, specify the data section ID every single time for each one of these elements, as opposed to just being able to write it once up here and then target every individual element inside of this broader container. So um, now that I've compiled the CSS, I can copy that and I'll replace it. I'll just paste as plain text and I'll replace that in my custom CSS window. And now I can take all this and I'm gonna cut it and I'll put it in the page header code injection. I'm gonna go to advanced. I'll open up some style tags and paste that in. And now as I hit save, we'll see that menu styling come back. Perfect. All right, so that keep, because this is so specific to this one page, that keeps my site-wide CSS window a little bit cleaner. And yeah, it, it's just better for organization in my opinion. Otherwise your custom CSS window can get really, really, really busy. So we now have this awesome hover interaction here. We have our menu on the home page, and it's completely mobile responsive because we've made it stack as the screen size starts to get smaller. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know in the comments below. This is much more advanced uh, because we are writing our own HTML and CSS, but hopefully you've picked up some good uh, nuggets of learning along the way. All right, hopefully I'll see you in the next one.